Hi everyone, and welcome back for another episode in our Shooter AI tutorial series. Last episode, we finished off our Shooter from Cover code for our AI, but now we've got a problem when it comes to teams. So if you've got multiple AIs that, want, that you want to attack the player, the issue we have is, for example, he will get cover and shoot at you, but it really should be telling these two to also shoot at you because they're not exactly far away, are they? So as he's shooting at me, these two should also know where I am and shoot at me. So we make this AI call out a target. And that's what we're accomplishing today. So the method for I'm going to be using for this is just one of many methods. Um, I want to show you this one in this video. And when I do the melee AI, when we get around to doing that, the third person, third person action uh, AI, when I get around to doing that one, I'll show you a different method of doing this, same sort of technique. Um, but this method I'm about to show you is quite similarly similarly used in shooters and like especially linear games. So, um, so yeah, let's get cracking with it. So, the first thing we need to do is set up something called an encounter space. Now, what an encounter space is is a volume that is going to be indicating where a fight is taking place. And the reason why we do it as a volume is because then when we enter it. We can tell the game to lock the doors, play some music, and do whatever we want to start the encounter. And then when it's ended, we can determine what's still left inside the volume, if they're all dead. And if they are all dead, then you can play the music, unlock the doors, give the points to the player, so on and so forth. So it allows you to control and manage the battle. Whenever you're dealing with AI battles in a game, you're going to want a third, a, a, a third um, person, well, no, a third party sort of actor that is going to be managing the battle, so keeping track of who's still alive, what the score is, who's attacking who, and we do things like ticket systems in uh, third person action games as well. So we're going to do something very similar here and make the encounter handle the calling out of the target so the encounter space will actually know where the player is and then send that what it wants to to the ai so for this we need to create a new actor and i'm going to call it encounter space and we'll open it up now the encounter space only has one component and that's going to be the box collision and we we'll call it encounter space or volume rather and that's all we need to do for that. I'm going to go to my event graph and we're just going to clear these and we're going to set up a new function. So type in custom function or custom event. And we're going to call this one call out target. And the call out target is going to need one input. So click on new parameter on the left on the right hand side here and call it target location. And that is going to be a vector. Similarly, in your variables, you want to go new variable and call this one target location as well. Because when we call this function from somewhere else, we want to be able to store where the target is to be able to tell other AI. Compile. So on this call out target function, we're going to first of all store this input into our variable so drag your target location out and choose set and we'll plug that all into there so now we're saving that target location we've just passed through um, once we've done that we need to do a get all actors of class so we're going to get all the actors of the class which is going to be the enemy actor and that will turn a list of all the actors okay as an array with this, we're going to go into a for each loop. Because we now need to tell all these enemies where you're at. Okay. So the for each loop here, um, we've got the first enemy here, enemy array object, which is the array element. We need to first of all check that it's actually inside the volume. So we go overlapping. You go, is overlapping actor. And you want the other to be the array element and the target to remain a self because you want to determine whether it's overlapping this encounter space. 
If it is, that returns a boolean, true or false, and that will go into a branch. Because we only want this to work if enemies are inside this account space. So if you've got a, a large level with enemies in the next room, you don't want them to also join the battle. You just want them to stay where they are and only affect those who are inside your encounter. Once we've done that, we now need to get hold of that enemy's blueprint, um, uh, blackboard, sorry. And with that blackboard, we need to set the values for the target location and it's also it can see the player. So the array element here, I'm going to drag this out and get the blackboard and once we've got the blackboard we're going to set value as a vector into true the vector value is this target location that we saved earlier and the key name we drag out and type in make literal name and that allows us to type in the key name that we want to save it in in this case it's called target location on our blackboard once we've got that we also need to tell it that it can see the player that way it will trigger it to actually hunt down the player so it's almost as if it can see the player but it's not really seeing it but it, it's like it knows where you are okay so it'll start running towards you so to do that just drag this out from get blackboard again and set value as ball Tick the box and the key name again, make literal so you can type it out exactly how you want it. It's important to note that these must be spelled exactly the same as your blackboard's keys. Okay, and that's it, that's all we have to do here. So, as soon as it's gone through all the enemies, all the enemies inside the encounter space will know where you are and will start working towards chasing you down. So, we can click compile there. And that's our function for call out target. Now, once we've got that function in place, we need to be able to call it out. So before we do that, let's first of all place our encounter space over our encounter room. So I'm going to drag it out here. And I'm just going to scale it so it is covering the entire space. And there we go. Okay. So that will do for that. Um, then we're going to go into our AI and to our behavior tree. So when we shoot from cover, so when an AI sees you, for example, we need to be able to tell them to start calling out the target to all their mates. So when we shoot from cover, when it's shooting, we're going to call out. And also when we find cover, it means we've seen the player. So when we focus on the player, we're going to send that data to the uh, call out target. So we need to make a new task. So I go up top, new task, and you'll choose BT task blueprint base. And we're going to name that one straight away. And we'll call it call out target. <clears throat> In our target uh, task, we need to go execute AI, receive execute AI. And quite simply, all we need to do on this one is get the encounter space they're currently in and then tell it to use that function. So the owner controller here, we're going to, um, not the owner controller, it's a controlled pawn here. We're going to go, um, actually not from there either, get uh, actors uh, of, get all actors of class. Choose the encounter space. And because there's only one encounter space, we don't need to do a for each loop or anything like that. We just drag this out and just do get and get a copy. And that will get the first instance in the array, which is the only one that's going to be there, really. Once we've got that, we're going to do the call out target function that we just made. And there you can see the parameter that we set up the target location. So the target location is actually going to come from our blackboard. So on the variables, click on new variable, target, uh, sorry, I'm going to do bb underscore target location. And that is of the variable type blackboard key selector. Make it editable so that little eyeball shows. Drag this out, get, and then from there we're getting the blackboard value. 
as vector. Plug that in, and then finally, we just need to finish the execute. And tick the box. With that task made, we can now put it into our behavior tree. So after shoot from cover has played, we're going to call out target, setting the BT, uh, BB target location to the target location blackboard key. And similarly, once we focus on the player, we're going to call out target. And again, set that as target location. Um, I noticed, just notice here I've got BT, a BB target self actor. Let's change that to target location and can see player to can see player. Make sure these are all okay. Yep. Uh, shoot from cover, we'll change that one to target location. Yeah, okay, cool. Click save and I think we're done. So now when one shoots, they all come running and they all will shoot back, look for cover, and if I run away, they'll all chase me. And you can see them starting to move, so one of them's gone that way, one's gone this way. There he is. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> okay. So we've got a slight jankiness in there, but the ultimate goal is there. We've got AI that will work together to shoot at you, aim at you, and try and take you down okay so all that's left is to make it so we can kill these guys and wrap up last few minor details such as getting the um the idle behavior tree working together with the uh, shoot from cover behavior tree because we've done two behavior trees now you combine them and make them work together as well as get them to actually take some damage and we'll do that in the next episode if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and don't forget to subscribe to the video. If you want to see the next video right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey and donate just $1. That $1 will get you access to loads of videos well ahead of time, like months ahead of time, uh, before they're released to public, uh, publicly, as well as archives of all our live streams straight away as soon as like, uh, the live stream is finished. Other benefits include access to the Discord as well as project files and so forth. For example, the project file for this uh, system will be available very, very soon once the series has come to an end. As we are approaching the end, that'll be very, very soon. So, big shout out and thank you to everyone who supported me thus far. You've all been amazing, especially those of the top tier patrons. Thank you again so much uh, for supporting me this month. Uh, Say, so every little bit helps me trying to get me to do this full time. At the moment, I'm doing this full uh, alongside my real life work. So, I'd like to be able to do this full time and uh, your donations help me achieve that goal so keep at it thank you so much and hopefully we can grow this into a really great uh, a great thing so thanks again and i'll see you all next time bye bye